Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's do a ch uh, quick check in with Weed as of today's close. And all right, so a little bit uh, different than what I was sort of anticipating yesterday, although it has not invalidated the overall uh, scenario yet. Um, so yesterday I had this label a little differently. We had maybe a one, two, and then I called this all of three and said that we were working a four. Well, now this has gone uh, too far up to just be a fourth. So I've relabeled it, tweaked it a bit, where we have a one down, two up, and then a three, four, five, a little bit of an abbreviated four, but uh, technically still works, not ideal. And then that would be for this uh, larger A down. And now we're potentially working A, B, C up for a B wave. Uh, although obviously this will get invalidated uh, once we get past a certain point and then we'll just be making new highs again. Uh, although until we get to that point, this can still be considered a B wave retracement. And then if and when that uh, scenario plays out and we do make a, a lower high, we could be looking down, uh, you know, to test this low or make a new low in a wave C of a larger fourth wave perhaps. And then at that point, uh, begin to be looking, you know, quite a bit higher uh, with a good trade setup in a fifth wave after that. That's kind of my uh, idealized setup. Doesn't mean that's gonna happen or I'm gonna get it. So that's kind of what I'm looking for here. Uh, now here we have the uh, equality relationship between what I've labeled as A and C uh, thus far off of B. So we've gone a little bit past that. That would have been around 59.18. So we've creeped a little higher than that. We have the 618 retracement of this overall leg down, this A wave as it's labeled here. And we've gone a little bit past that. And then we have the 786 retracement next, which would be a little higher than we currently are, 6072. Um, and then we just have this parallel trend channel, which so far we're kind of contained in with this uh, move to the upside. And then let's just say we had ended uh, right here, not saying we have, but let's say we have, uh, the equality relationship between A and C off of B up here would be down at 5011, okay? Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, this may not be how it's playing out, even though it looks pretty decent as far as uh, getting a wave count. So I've put an alternate up. And the alternate is this. Uh, maybe we just had this very, very simplistic ABC down with a more extreme than usual C wave. It's certainly still possible. Uh, it's not the idealized zigzag, but it still works as a zigzag. So ABC down for four, very quick. Um, still decent uh, percentage retracement, although not as big as uh, one might have expected. And now we're potentially working our first impulse wave to the upside, maybe working five up for a larger one, and then we're gonna have a two, three, four, five, and so on, uh, which will actually just be part of a, uh, you know, a larger larger fifth wave. Uh, if I was to paint a picture here, I'm gonna go four hour maybe. Um, you know, something like this. Um, now if we were to go, um, maybe the daily chart here, uh, if you get an idea, you know, we're up on the one, we got the two, that was likely the three, you know, we've had a very abbreviated four, now we're already starting the fifth. Uh, I don't like that as much just cause it's so quick, but you know, maybe that's how it played out. Um, but just, it's good to have, uh, you know, at least two wave counts, uh, in mind. Um, you know, your primary, this, I'd say this is my primary interpretation. Here's maybe my alternate interpretation. Um, but going back to the primary, so not really a great trade setup per se. I mean, the, the risk, say you went short here, if you actually just sold stock short, looking for this leg down, uh, you know, you could put your stop just above uh, the high here to buy it back, uh, which isn't an enormous dollar risk. You know, you're risking maybe around $3 uh, to try and make, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, at this point you'd be making, you know, close to nine or $10 if, if the trade worked out. So not a bad risk reward ratio, but uh, the overall trend, not in your favor. So it's definitely a counter trend move of the larger trend, which isn't my uh, favorite thing to do. Uh, so there's that. Or if you want to do this, 
and uh, you know interpret this bullish right away. Well, I mean, okay, so if we break the highs here, do you just buy the breakout? You could, you know, might get some follow through, might even get a really good follow through, but where do you put your stop? Well, if you just get a marginal new high and then roll over again, right after buying the breakout, you get a false breakout. So that's not necessarily a good trade setup. Uh, now, if we do get a five up here, say, and then we, uh, you know, get a five up here before we break the high, and then we have a, you know, corrective looking three wave decline of some sort, right? Something like that and get a wave two. Uh, that could be a good trade setup because now you have a clear five up, three down off of this low. And then you could put your stop just below this low uh, and not take a large, you know, dollar risk. And now actually have some pretty good odds in your favor of, you know, the next wave up will break new highs and have good follow through and then adjust the trade after that. So yeah, currently still watching this market, very interesting, very volatile, but as far as actually participating in it, um, just don't see the setup I normally look for. So definitely largely on the sidelines here for now. Uh, was able to, you know, close the puts, as I mentioned in the last video from Friday on this weakness uh, we had uh, yesterday. So that was good. Uh, but now, I mean, I'm definitely still kind of favoring, favoring a bullish side uh, trade setup, but it's not, the conditions aren't met for me to uh, initiate a position yet. So I'm still watching. And if we just go to the uh, daily candlestick chart, um, I'll just make a new, new chart here and clean the labels up from it just so we can get a more, more pure candlestick chart with nothing going on on it. Uh, so yeah, let's do that. So just looking at this, the candlestick today was quite strong and, uh, you know, we opened higher, closed higher, closed at the high of the day, rejected these lower prices intraday. Um, after this kind of doji day yesterday, which we essentially just bounced off the T line or uh, just about bounced off that T line. So looking at the candlestick chart, uh, all Elliott waves aside, um, this this looks quite uh, you know strong still. Certainly, you don't see a candlestick sell signal yet. Uh, you know, if we'd opened here and then closed lower and done a bearish engulf, you know, after the doji or something, that would have been uh, more substantial, and certainly would have favored uh, you know the bearish wave interpretation here. Uh, a lot more so, but that's not what we got. So looking at this, just purely on the candlesticks and just the moving averages and everything, uh, it's kind of favoring this bullish interpretation. Uh, but you know what? It's just not clear enough for me to really be going big here. So sometimes you just got to sit on your hands and wait for something clear to set up for you. Better than, uh, you know, taking a stab in the dark and potentially losing money or just getting lucky and, you know, making a lot of money. That's, that's not how I trade. I don't trade on, uh, you know, shots in the dark and try not to gamble, try to actually have a pretty clear idea of the setup and, you know, define your risk, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, still watching this very carefully. Certainly is volatile and we'll check in, uh, well, either tomorrow if something, uh, significant happens or certainly after the close on Friday or over the weekend sometime. All right, Serial Trader signing off.